Welcome to Fancler Field here in Rochester, Indiana. We have tonight's TRC conference game between the Rochester Lady Zebras and the Manchester Squires. Rochester is coming into this undefeated and they have clinched the title. So this is kind of a relaxing game for them in the aspect that the pressure is not on them for the win, but we would cer certainly like to have a clean sweep on the on the conference wins with a 9-0. Um, so they're certainly pushing for that, I'm sure. Right now we have the three senior captains meeting at the home plate. And it is senior night to honor them. Uh, we have senior number 44, Kennedy Musselman, who has played extensive time all four years, varsity, um, as well as number three, Lexi Elliott. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. To for tonight's TRC also being our I will leave it to Randy Wynn with their field audio for, for the seniors. We'd like to recognize our three seniors this year. First, starting with number three, Alexis Elliott. Alexis is the daughter of Andrea and Beth Elliott. Her favorite subjects are AP Calculus with Screeton, Biomed 4 with Blackburn, AP Government with Stasiak, Econ with Stasiak, and her internship at Fulton County Vet Clinic. She didn't want to leave anybody out. Her most memorable softball moment was during an away game. Once a lightning delay was declared, Carla told them to go out and swing their bats so they could be productive with their time. In addition to softball, Alexis participates in cross country, National Honor Society, New Tech Ambassadors, Student Council, working at BNK, and interning at the Fulton County Vet Clinic. After high school, Alexis will be attending IUPUI for biology on a pre-vet track. Then she will attend vet school to become a small animal veterinarian. Number three, Alexis Elliott. Our second senior, number seven, Corey Rao. Corey Con Rao is the daughter of Carrie Grovener and Ryan Rao. Her favorite subjects are AP Government with Mr. Stasiak and Calculus with Mr. Streeton. Her most memorable softball moments were making her teammates laugh all the time and having her number one fan, Grandpa Tom, playing catch with Lexi and winning the TRC even though no one thought the underdogs could handle it this year as seniors. In addition to softball, she participates in National Honor Society Student Council, uh, volleyball, after graduation, Corey plans on attending University of Indianapolis where she will study psychology and criminal justice. Number seven, Corey Rao. And our third senior, number 44, Kennedy Musselman. Kennedy is the daughter of David and Carleen Musselman. Her favorite subject is Spanish with Mrs. Zartman. Kennedy's most memorable softball moment was when Addie tried to walk through the locker room with metal cleats on and fell. In addition to softball, she participates in basketball, National Honor Society, and Spanish Club. After graduation, Kennedy plans on attending Glen Oaks College in Centerville, Michigan. She will study psychology and hopes to continue her basketball career there as well. Number 44, Kennedy Musselman. At this time, thank you and would like to read it. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. The lawyers and staff at Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. RTC Fiber Communications. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice, data, and video connectivity for the 21st century. Local service, local support. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors.
Let's give them a round of applause for our three seniors. This is Dee Brown. I'm here at Rochester oh, High no, School's Lady lineups. Zebra softball game versus Manchester First Squires, player, yes. and I have my son, Chase Manchester. Brown, with me. Lady we are commentating Squires. tonight um, for Patty an exciting Burke. conference Frank game. Uh, one, we have Manchester Squires Patty being introduced Patty currently. Patty Number one, Allie Sykes. Batting third, playing center field. Number three, Mackenzie Day. Batting fourth, playing first base, number 13, Kiera Stacy. Batting fifth, playing left field, number four, Carson Howard. Batting sixth, catching, number six, Sydney Day. Batting seventh, playing second base, number two, Torina Rumble. In the circle this afternoon for the ladies, Squires, number 12, and batting eight, Maddie McKee. And the number nine batter, playing the right field, number eight, Lindy Greer. Now to the Lady Zebras, now for your starting lineups lineup. for your own Lady Zebras. Batting first, playing shortstop, number 11, Macy Brown. Batting second, playing second base, a senior, number four, Corey Rao. Batting third, playing first base, another senior, number 44, Kennedy Musselman. Batting fourth, and in the circle this afternoon for the ladies' neighbors, number 25, Addie Harsh. Batting fifth, the designated player, number 12, Allie Borges. Catching this afternoon for the Lady Zebras, the flex player, number 23, Abby Richard. Batting in the sixth spot, the third baseman, another senior, number five, Alexis Elliott. Batting seventh, double zero, the center fielder, Charlie Pocock. Batting eighth, the right fielder, excuse me, the left fielder, number seven, Carly Beeler. And batting ninth, the right fielder, number 32, Maya Musselman. Time now for the national anthem. If everyone will please rise, gentlemen, remove your caps for the plane of the Star Spangled Banner. I can do, I can do the, uh,
This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, farm personal property, and farm outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions. Online at EvansAgencyRochester.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank, online at firstfederalbanking.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. Here we are today with Rochester versus Manchester softball. It looks like a pretty even match record-wise. Um, both teams coming in at 13 and 8, but Rochester being 8-0 in the conference, sitting at first, and Manchester tied for second at 6-2. and two. And we now have number five up to bat, Emma West. First pitch ball. Low on the outside. Addie Harsh is in the circle. Sophomore. Strike one. Hitting the outside corner. Addie's been doing really well stepping up in the circle this year. She works hard and it's come a long way. She's doing a great job leading the team there. And a foul ball for strike two. We've got number 23, freshman, Abby Richard, catching. Number 44, Kennedy Musselman at first base. Corey Rowell, senior, second base. And she grounds out. Oh, we have it. She reaches on air. Is safe on an error. Bring up the we have senior base, Alexis one. Elliott, number three, at third base. And sophomore Macy Brown at shortstop. And now we have number one, Ali Seitz, up to bat. And West advances to second on a wild pitch. West advances to second on a wild pitch. She's going towards third, but decided to hold off. We have junior number nine, Carly Beeler, in left field. Sophomore Charlie Pocock in center, and in right field we have freshman Maya Musselman. At number five, holding at second, foul ball, strike one. One ball, one strike. And we've got number one with a hit, which advances number five west to third base. Got runners on the corner, no outs. And now up to bat, we have Day of Manchester, number three. Day also leads Manchester in walks, so I'm sure she'll be looking to get on base in that manner. And we've got a strike. Oh, hi. And number one advances to second with defensive indifference. Number three shows the bunt, but pulls back on that one. Counts two and one. They challenged the call, but she did not offer. And we've got a fly ball foul out of play.
Count to two and two. No outs. Runners at second and third. We've got a fly ball. Macy Brown tracks and fires home. And the ball gets by catcher. But they decide to hold off and go back to the base. Dave flies out to Brown shortstop. That's one out. Great, away. great tracking by Macy Brown. One out now for the Zebras, which brings up number 13, Kiera Stacy. And ball outside, first pitch. Swing and miss. Counts one and one. Good block by Ali or Abby Richard. Counts two one. One out. And West scores on a passed ball. Counts three and one. One out, runner on third. And we've got a hit to right field. Scores number one. Manchester's now two. Two runs on the board. Zebras still have one out. And now to bat, we have number four, Lydia Greer. Follow. Ball high. 2 0 count. Maddie's coming into this game with a 3.78 ERA. 12 wins, 6 losses. Um, she's had 92.2 innings pitched. Faced 477 batters. 81 strikeouts. She's, told, she's thrown 1,793 pitches. Strike. Working the inside of the plate there. Good location by Harsh. And we've got a ground out to second. And an attempt at a double play. Almost. They got the lead runner there, and now they are in a two-out situation with the runner on first. Good play by Rao and Brown. Two outs, runner on first. Now to bat, we have number six, Sydney Day. Ball low. Good job by Richard of keeping that ball in front of her so she could get keep the run on first. And we have the runner advancing to second on a pass ball. Runner advances on a wild pitch. Yeah. 
We got a strike. Guy's doing a good job working that outside corner. Counts 2-1, two, two outs. Runner at second. Got a grounder back to the pitcher. Addy throws it easily over to first to Kennedy Musselman for the third out. Zebras head into the bottom of the first with a 2-0 deficit. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Shepherd's Chevrolet Buick in Rochester treats you like family. Shepherd's offers a wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles to fit your budget. Stop out for your test drive today, online at shepherdsrochester.com. Woodlawn Hospital, offering state-of-the-art care for Fulton County for over 100 years. Woodlawn Hospital is the area's health care leader. Comprehensive care from head to toe, online at woodlawnhospital.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. We have um, Ali, Ali Borges, number 12. She's a sophomore. Um, she's also hit four home runs so far this season. She, When she gets a hold of it, she can clobber it. Her bat's really improved this year. Number six, we have senior Lexi Elliott, number three. And the number seven in the lineup is Charlie Pocock, double O. She's a sophomore. And number eight, we have Cardi Beeler, Jr., number nine. And in the ninth position in the lineup, we have Maya Musselman, who's a freshman, number 32. She's really come on. And both the Musselman sisters did well at the plate against Northfield. They had two hits, uh, two RBIs each. Um, they really, really were performing well at the plate. Zero's come into this one hitting 345, which is slightly higher than Manchester, hitting just a little under 300. So we've got lefty Macy Brown. First pitch strike. And a foul ball out of play. She's got an 0 2 count on her. She needs to protect now. Good eye. She lets the outside pitch go. A little bit close for my comfort, but. Nice. Brown, Got a hit. Brown rips it right over the second baseman's head, just right, or er, to or about right center. Line drive single. Brown, yep. Single bring up the second baseman, Brown. Now we have up to bat number seven, Corey Rao. Corey's another lefty. She's She also can flip over to the right um, and has a few times. She's fast. She's a senior. She's... And she lays down a bunt, sack bunt. Let's see if she's safe. She's out, out at first on the sack, uh, but moves Macy to second. Scoring position. Now we have senior number 44, Kennedy Musselman. Big bat. Great power hitter yes. for the Zebras. She's shown, shown some great leadership to this team. Actually, I think she may lead lead the uh, team in being hit by pitch, unfortunately. It seems like she gets hit a lot. She almost got another one right there. And there we have strikes. So we got a 1-1 one, one count. This pitcher also is trying to work the inside corner on her. And there's a changeup. Throw down to second, over through, went out to center field. Macy went back to base. And a low strike call. 
every umpire is different. You've got to figure out their zone. Um, she seems to be calling them low. We've got a foul ball out of play. Counts two and two, one out. Got Macy at second, Kennedy at the plate. And she gets Kennedy on the swing. Let's bring up number 25, Harsh. Number 25, Harsh. Addie's a sophomore. Inside, one at, that's ball one. Addie's been a very patient batter. She usually, she many times will take it to a full count. Um, she's shown great patience. Foul ball out of play. Make it a one-on-one -on -one count. Addie's had a really good bat this year. She's been a pretty dominant hitter, or a dominant power hitter for the Zebras. She has. She's had one home run. Yeah. Um, I believe that was a three-run dinger, too. In the and Addie grounds into fielder's choice. She tries to get Macy Brown out at third. It's not a force out, so Macy slides in and is safe. Now coming in to run for Harsh, Delaney Chibs. Freshman, uh, number four, she's very speedy. Uh, she's had some travel ball experience playing on Slugger's team out of Warsaw uh, with Dave Musselman, actually. And we've got number 12 up to bat, Allie Borges. Another power hitter. Uh, she's, she's done really well at the plate and behind the plate this year. And we've got a single, which scores Macy Brown for the RBI. RBI single. Zebras now have runners on first and second with two outs, bringing up Alexis Elliott, number three, a senior. Third Got runners five. on first and second. Three, two outs. Scores two to one now. A swing and a miss for strike one. Fires down to first for the pickoff attempt. No go. And we've got a fly ball that is caught by right fielder on the right field line. After out number three. So at the end of first inning, where it scores two to one, Manchester. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Blue Dragon Taekwondo. Whether you want to learn self-defense, physical cross-training, or looking to compete in national tournaments, Blue Dragon Taekwondo is the area's leading martial arts authority. Online at tkdbluedragon.com. RTC Fiber Communications. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice, data, and video connectivity for the 21st century. Local service, local support, local investment. Online at rtc1.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. Okay, we're back to the top of the second inning. Leading off is in the second inning for the Squires. The second baseman, number two, Rumble. We now have the second baseman, number two for Manchester, up to bat. First pitch strike, nice. Ball 
ball high. Counts one on one. We got a foul ball for strike two. Ball's out of play. Ground ball to shortstop Macy Brown. Fires it to first to Ali Borges for the out. And we also have a defensive change for Rochester. Number 44, Kennedy Musselman behind the plate now this inning. And they moved number 12, Allie Borges, over to first. They both have done pretty well at those positions this year. Senior Kennedy Musselman has done outstanding in whether she's at first or behind the plate in the leadership role of being vocal, um, taking charge out there on the field and talking to her teammates. Um, She's really been outstanding in that role. And we've got a strike. A one count. And a swing and a miss for strike two. And swing and a miss for strike three. That's strikeout number one for Harsh. Great location. Ball high, good grab by Kennedy Musselman. She's 1-0. She's done a really good job this year of keeping balls in front of her, not letting many go by. And she's got a strong arm. And ball high. Got a 3-0 count. And Natty comes back with a strike. We got a 3 1 count. And another strike. And Harsh is battling back now with a full count. Great job. Ball bounces on the plate. Allie Boy just comes up and fields the ball to tag the runner out. Great play, Allie. Score still is two to one going into the bottom of the second. Up to bat, Charlie Pocock in the number seven spot on the lineup card. Number double zero, she is a sophomore. Playing center field tonight. On deck we have Carly Beeler. Playing left field tonight, she's number nine, she's a junior. And in the hole we have freshman Maya Musselman, number 32. Maya is the younger sister of Kennedy Musselman, our senior tonight. And uh, they're both the daughters of assistant coach David Musselman. Both multi-sport athletes. And Charlie's first pitch is a low ball. Charlie also participates in some travel softball, playing for the Rockets organization. Oh, there's several girls on the team and with travel ball experience that definitely lends to their play. And Charlie 
hits a blooper that goes over third baseman's head and short of short. Um, but fires it over to first and gets her out. Now up to, no, uh, up to bat, number nine, Carly Beeler. She's a junior. First pitch is a strike on Cardi. Cardi's the daughter of Todd Beeler, who's an, an assistant coach as well. Cardi's also had some uh, travel ball experience playing on the Sluggers team out of Warsaw. A swing and a miss for strike two for Cardi. Outside pitch for ball. One. This counts one, two. And then Cardi battles, fouling that ball off. To buy yourself another pitch. Curry grounds out to first base for out number two. Bringing up freshman Maya Musselman. Musselman also a slapper for the Zebras. She had a great night at the plate against Northfield. First pitch strike on Maya. Maya has shown some great patience at the plate too for com incoming freshmen. And a swing and a miss for strike two. She has an 0-2 count. I've seen her be a two-strike hitter many times though. A foul ball that stays alive, not caught. Musman now with still an 0-2 count, two outs. Mm. And a swing and a miss for strike three Plus on the rise ball. After two, the Squires are still up, two to one. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. The lawyers and staff at Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. RTC Fiber Communications. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice, data, and video connectivity for the. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these. Okay, coming back at you for the top of the third inning. Every defense is in the same positions as last last inning. Addie staying in the circle and Kennedy behind the plate. Laying off for the third inning for the Squires. The shortstop, number five, West. So we're back at the top of the lineup with West. And ball outside. Ball high. Got a 2 0 count. And West actually comes into this one being Manchester's leading hitter with a 435 batting average. She walks. 
rounds first. Walks rounds first and looking to go to second. Kennedy got, came back and got the ball back to Addy to hold her at first. Now up we have number one, Allie Seitz. Good stop by Brown, but she can't get her. She got it deep in the pocket with a backhand and was smart enough to know that she to not risk the throw. She held it to the infield, though, whereas it, that could have got through, and as fast as West is, she might have been scoring. We got a foul ball, strike one. On the bunt attempt. Up to bat is number three, Mackenzie Day. The bun attempt again. She did offer, struck two. We got an 0 2 count. Runners on first and second, no outs. And Addy. Addy catches that pop up. For out number one, holds the runners at first and second. Coming up to bat now is number 13, Kira Stacy. She's a senior for the Squires. We've got a hard hit grounder to second baseman Corey for the out at second. Macy Brown turns the double play. Good hustle alert and hustle play by Rao, Brown, and Borges. That's three crisp plays. Corey cleaned it, cleanly fielded it. Nice throw to Macy at second. Macy threw a strike to, to first. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, farm personal property, and farm outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions. Online at evansagencyrochester.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank, online at First Federal Banking. This broadcast is... And we're back with, in the top of the third, with Brown up to bat. Oh. Swing and a miss on the changeup. For strike one. And we've got a foul ball tip for strike two. She's in protect mode again. Brown comes into this one with a 500 batting average. She holds on the ball, high ball. And we've got a one-two count. And she waits on that change up this time. Smacks it to a shortstop. Tips off of her glove for a hard ground ball. Brown, for a hit. Shortstop, you call that a hit or an air? Second baseman, number seven, Brown. Um, I'd probably call that an air just because it tipped off of her glove, but it was a good effort by both Brown yep. and the shortstop. It was. And we've got a pass ball. 
Brown advances to second. Catcher attempts to throw it down, but can't get her. We've got number seven, senior Corey Rao up to bat. Brown and Rao have actually been described as lightning in Kennedy Musselman, Allie Borges, and Lexi Elliott have been and described Addie is thunder. as the thunder, lightning being quickness and speed, and thunder being the power hitters. We've got a foul ball. For a one-two count on Corey. And a swing and a miss for strike three on Corey. Leaves Macy still on second. One out. We have Musselman up to bat, senior. Kennedy is a multi-sport athlete. She plays basketball. She's been, she's been a key athlete all four years. In both sports. I mean, she has the obvious thing that you can't coach, which is height and strength, um, but she has brought more to both games. And we've got a change up pitch for a ball. Pitcher's pretty telltale when she's winding up for a change up. Go ball, go, go, go. Yes. Musselman with the two run home run. Putting the Zebras up three to two. Dinger, two run dinger to score Macy Brown. And here comes Kennedy on her home run march on senior night. How cool. Yes. That's actually back to back games with a home run for Musselman. That'll bring up the batter, the pitcher, number 25, Harsh. Nice. That puts us up now, three to two on the board. <laughs> Bringing Addie Harsh to the plate, number 25, sophomore, our pitcher tonight, uh, with one out. Ball high. And with that home run, that brings the Zebras team total to 11 on the year, leading the conference. Technically 10 out of the park, though. Yeah, Brown Nine. having in inside the parker. And a swing and a miss. Good cup. Got a two-two count. Ball high again. Addie showing great patience at the plate, working the count, taking it to a full count. Full count and one out now for the zebras. Addie battles that off. Fouls it, stay alive, buys another pitch. So far, good at bat. Great. Actually, that's a plate appearance. A walk is a plate appearance, not an at bat. Great job, great patience by Addie. And Chips is now coming in for Harsh again to run. Bring up Allie Borges, number 12. Back to the Zebras, the first baseman, number 12, Borges. Allie moved here her freshman year from the Caston School District to come up to Rochester. And the ball high. It's been a welcome addition to the team, for sure. 
And a foul ball for strike. It's a 1-1 one, one count. One out. Runner at first. And Allie rips it through the 3-4 hole. hole. Oh, and we have a the chips rounded second. Uh, they threw it into second and tagged her off, off the base. Two outs now for the Zebras. Lexi Elliott now to bat, the senior. And she hits that to the second baseman, ending the third inning. Zebras are now up three to two on the Squires. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, farm personal property, and farm outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions. Online at evansagencyrochester.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank, online at firstfederalbanking.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. And we're back now, top of the fourth inning. Lady Zebras have the same defensive lineup out in the field. Up to bat now, we have number four, Lydia Greer. And it looks like most of the Manchester players have some type of travel ball experience since they're wearing Shock helmets. Shock is a travel team based out of Manchester. Follow. Two two count. And a foul ball. Still remains at the two two count. And a hard pitcher. ground ball back to Addy. The easy throw over to first, making it look routine. One out now for the Zebras. Interestingly enough, off of the Northfield game, out of those 21 outs, 17 were ground outs into the infield. They didn't get a ball hit to the outfield for a hit until the sixth inning. Addie Harsh got the other four outs with strikeouts. That was a great defensive game for the Zebras all around. It was. Uh, very sharp. And we've got a hit up to right center. Ground ball out to Charlie Pocock for a single. Number two, Rumble. Got second baseman number two up to bat. Runner at first, one out. 
And looks like that runner is going to go. Good stop by Musselman. Runner's getting a huge jump off of first. She even looks on the edge of leaving early. Number 44 has a gun, though. It's she wants to gun her down, she easily can. Follow. Walks number two. That puts runners on first and second. With one out. And that brings up number 12, Maddie McKee, the pitcher. It was a strikeout last at bat. We've got a ball low. Runner getting a huge lead off second, looking to go three. At the plate. For the Northfield game, too, we we uh, we actually only had one strikeout that game, meaning balls were put into play. Uh, that at least gives it a chance. They did a lot of good things all the way around for that game to to win the game and seal the deal for the conference win. Made them eight and zero in the conference for the outright title. Then we've got a wild pitch. Runners looking to come home. She rounds third. She remains at third. Now we have runners at third and second. One out still for the Zebras. And Addie comes back with a strike. 3-1 count. One out. Runners at two and three. All high. Bases are loaded now. He wants to load the bases. For the center fielder. Excuse me, for the left fielder, number eight, Greer. <laughs> and the three rivers. Um, Rochester's. Obviously, the first, we have three teams with two losses right now, Manchester, North Miami, and Whitco. Um, North Miami is playing against Southwood tonight as also for a conference game. And we have Northfield at Peru and McConaughey at Wabash. And the batter is hit by pitch to bring in number six to score a run. And we are back to the top of the order with Emma West. As fast as she is, it wouldn't surprise me if they ever lay down a bunt. Infield is playing in though. They might be quick enough to get her at home. Oh. She is swinging away. And she pops up and it goes foul out of play. Strike two. We've got an 0-2 count now. Oh, yeah. 
Brown ball to hit to short. Macy fires at home. Ball is dropped for an error to score. Squires now up on the zebras, four to three. One out still. Runners at second and third. Uh, actually, bases are still loaded. Sorry. Ball low. Zebra's looking to get themselves out of a jam. Infield is playing in. Ball high. Oh, we've got a strike. And that goes foul. Count now, one, two. I thought it was two, two. Hi. I think you're right. I think the count. Oh, no. Oh, She's saying two, two. And ball high. Now we're at a full count. Base is loaded. One out. Score is four to three. And we've got a fly ball to center field. Charlie Pocock makes the catch. Runner tagging up for third to score. Throw in to Addy at the cutoff, and she fires it home a little bit too late. Sack fly for Scores a run. Score now 5-3 in favor of the Squires. Center fielder number three, Actually 5-3, I believe. Oh, hi. Mussman doing a good job framing that one, though, trying to persuade the umpire. That is another quality trait that Kennedy does very well. And a ball low. It's a good scoop. Stop. I think those traits at catcher help her when she's at first, too, uh, to stay low on the ball, even dropping and blocking if needed, if she has a grounder hit at her. We got a 3-1 count. Ball high. Bases loaded again now. They walk below the bases to bring out the first baseman. Number 13, Stacy. <laughs> now to bat the first baseman, number 13, Stacy. And Coach Carla Holland is calling a timeout. Carla has now, she was a former player at ISU. And she is now in her 21st year of coaching Rochester High School Zebra Softball. It's phenomenal. Uh, which actually means that uh, when her twins, Alec and Alexa, were little, they just turned 21, um, she was starting her high school coach career. So that's a lot on a plate. So she's done a commendable job. She's had many successes through the years. She's had five D1 players come out of her program, two of them being her own daughters. Uh, 2012, we had Abby Malko, uh, who was engaged to be married this fall and is an assistant coach at Winnemac High School, who went to ISU. She was a power hitter and utility player, even pitching if needed. I remember watching her pitch back when I was in probably middle school, and she was a pretty dominant pitcher for the Zebras. She was often called a machine in the youth youth league. Um, 
many, many great stats came out of Abby. She also had an amazing bet. Yes, power hitter for sure. Yeah. We've got a wild pitch that went past, but runner stays on three. We've got a 2 0 count, two outs. Scores five to three. Zebra is really looking to get out of a jam here. And we've got a pop up, and Addy gets that pop up catch. About the other D1 players, in 2013 we had Riley Holland, uh, who is also engaged to be married, and it, to current head baseball coach at Grace College, Cameron Screeton, who is a standout Rochester High School baseball player. Riley went to ISU, uh, her mom's alma, alma mater, and uh, she was a speedy slapper and played center field in not only high school ball, but also translated that into, into college ball. Um, we had Maggie Good, who is the sister of current head baseball coach Corey Good, went to IUPUI. She was named the 2017 Summit League Player of the Year. She was a power hitter. She played second base in high school and I believe played a lot of first base uh, at IUPUI. And then we had, in 2016, uh, the most recent, and they are current players in D1 level college softball. Uh, they're both sophomores. Becky Malko went to ISU. She was just named to the um, MVC all-tournament team with a 600 batting average, three runs scored, and a 667 on base percentage. She's a speedy slapper and plays center field for ISU. Up to bat, we have double zero, Charlie Pocock, sophomore. First pitch ball outside. Also in 2016, we had Alexa Holland, who's his current sophomore at Ohio. Their team is going into the NCAA tournament right now. Uh, I believe first game is Friday. She actually was a slapper and is now power hitting and actually hit her first career home run this year. Career home run as a college softball player, I should state. Interestingly enough, all of those players except Maggie Good played on and recruit and were recruited for college ball while playing on Indiana Magic Gold teams. It's an elite travel ball softball team organization that was started by Rochester's own Kim Clay, who is a Clay's flooring owner with wife Pam. The Clays were pioneers in travel softball in our area after seeing the need for a higher competition level of softball for their own daughter who went on to play D1 softball at Tennessee and Notre Dame. Charlie draws a walk, bringing up number nine, Carly Beeler. All of those players were multi-sport athletes. They were on and off the field and court role models. They, were highly, they had highly involved parents. They had great attitudes and work ethics. Uh, they've, done, they've been key in setting a high standard for our current players to look up to. Number nine, Carly Beeler Jr. is up to bat. She's playing left field tonight. Carly also is utility. She's played some infield at second base. And she lays the bunt down for a sack. Let's see if she's safe. And they call her out for the sack. But moves, moves Charlie Pocock to second, scoring position. I've got Maya Musselman, freshman, number 32, up to bat. First pitch strike on Maya. And another strike called on Maya. A little bit inside. But a called strike. We've got one out and an 0-2 count. Runner at second. And Maya pops that ball up. Speedy shortstop West charges in to catch that ball while in the air. We have now two outs. Lead off Macy Brown up to bat. Macy's a sophomore, wearing number 11. On, 
and the first pitch strike on Mace. Uh, second called strike again in the low area, but that's where this ump is calling it. Now she's in protect mode again. And she fouls it off, out of play. And fouls that one off again. And she rips it back up the middle for a hard ground ball single that is scores. Shardy Pocock. And she advances to second on the throw. Good hit by Brown. Also good hustle by Pocock. Getting in. Got number seven, Corey Rao up to bat. She's now flipping over to the right side. Let's see what she's going to do. And a swing and a miss. And now flipping over to the left. And a foul ball out of play. Strike two. Is an 0-2 count. Two outs. And Corey hits it in the air to left fielder and catches for out number three to end the inning. At the end of four, we are at a score of 5-4. Squires are up. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Blue Dragon Taekwondo. Whether you want to learn self-defense, physical cross-training, or looking to compete in national tournaments, Blue Dragon Taekwondo is the area's leading martial arts authority. Online at tkdbluedragon.com. RTC Fiber Communications. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice, data, and video connectivity for the 21st century. Local service, local support, local investment. Online at rtc1.com. Please support the local businesses. It's fine. Thank you. Let me know when you want it back. Okay, we are back. We are back for the top of the fifth inning. Zebras are down 5 4. First pitch ball low. Second pitch ball low. 0 2 count, or 2 0 count. Uh, foul ball for strike one. <laughs> and a nice strike by Addy. We've got a 2 2 count. And has strike three on the inside. Nice placement. Great location by Horse. That was excellent. Now to bat, we have the catcher, number six, Sydney Day. 
She is a senior for Manchester. And first pitch ball. Gets past the catcher, but no one on base, no, nothing hurt. Rochester looks to finish up their season. They have a game tomorrow night at South Bend Clay and then go to Culver Academies for a three-way against Northwestern and the Academy. After that, they head into sectional action next week, playing game one of the sectional 37, class 2A, at Oak Hill, against Oak Hill. And we get a strike. Counts 2-1. One. one out. Good frame by Kennedy on the outside corner. Ball low. We've got a 3-1 count. No. Hmm. Walks. And that pitch seems to be just a little bit high. Two, Walking day, bringing up number two. Runkle, who's a freshman. And we got a first pitch strike. Oh, one one count, one out. Day really getting it off first base pretty far on that last play. And Kennedy fires it down for the pickoff attempt. Day gets back to the base. Got a 1 1 count. One out, runner at first. And we've got a ball in the air. Looks like. Short stop. Pop up to short. And the oh. oh. Mm. Short stop. Macy Brown tracked that ball back, caught it, and fired it to first. By all appearances, looked like she had her, but called safe by the field dump. Good attempt by Brown. And a swing and a miss for strike one on number 12. Two outs. And a one on one count. Manchester is actually also in our sectional. They will be playing Cass also on the 22nd at 7 o'clock. Runner does a, a delay steal. Kennedy had to scoop that ball up. She did a good job keeping it in front of her. And Runner read the ball hitting the dirt and went ahead and went for it. Kennedy almost had her on the throwdown. And actually, these two teams could meet again in the sectional with in the second round if both of them win their first round games. Whitco and Wabash got the bye. They, they are playing. And we have ground ball up the middle for a hit. And that scores number six for an RBI single. Score now being 6-4 in favor of the Squires. Wabash and Whitco play the 23rd at 7 o'clock, and the championship game being on the 24th at 7 p.m. Interestingly enough, Oak Hill has a turf field. Um, most of our players, I don't believe, have played on a turf field unless they have it during travel ball experience. Um, I believe the only other opponent of ours that has a turf field is Logan Sport, and our game against Logan Sport was here this year. So that could be a whole new feel for them. The ball does a whole different thing on turf. Ball one. Oh, 
We got a runner on first. Two outs. Score is six to four now. And foul ball. For strike one. One on one count. In class 2A, interestingly enough, uh, an area team, Bremen, is ranked number one according to Max Preps. Um, they have a player on that team by the name of Aaron Koffel, who is a phenomenal player. She's leading the state in home runs with 16. She also plays on the Indiana Magic Gold team and has been recruited to play at Kentucky. She has a 639 batting average, 11 stolen bases, 41 RBIs, 1.59 slugging. Uh, to uh, Addy does a great job with strike three on that batter. And now heading into the bottom of the fifth, the Zebras are down still six to four. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. The lawyers and staff at Peterson Wagoner and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. RTC Fiber Communications. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice, data, and video connectivity for the 21st century. Local service, local support, local investment. Online at rtc1.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. Back to Class 2A softball standings. Um, we've got Rochester sitting at 28th, uh, Manchester just below us at 27th, and Cass at 26th. All of those being in our same sectional. And I would like to say those rankings are based on a computer. <laughs> and we've got Kennedy hit by pitch. Uh, umpire is having her, making her come back. Um, and Coach Holland is questioning it as she should. You don't have to attempt to get out of the way. She didn't lean into it. She stood her ground and she got hit by a pitch. Ooh, Kennedy's saying, hey, Coach, it's all right. I want to hit. And we've got the field ump calling a time. He wants to have a word with head coach Carter Holland. Unhappy comments coming from dugout. We've got the Musclemans having conference. Dad, David Musselman, our first base coach, having a talk with senior Kennedy Musselman. So here we go. We're going to, that's a ball. Outside pitch, ball two. And Kennedy clobbers it for a fly ball. Looks like it's gonna fall in the warning track out in left field. Almost. Ooh, 
Ooh, that brings up Addie Harsh, sophomore, our pitcher tonight. Addie hits a bullet up right field for a line drive single. I'm sure she'll have runner Delaney Chips coming in to run as courtesy. Zebra's got to be sure that we're smart on the bases now. Especially being down two runs. Ball high. Chip's getting a good lead off of first. Got number 12, Allie Borges up to bat. Allie hits a fly ball out to center field. Center fielder's tracking it back, and it hits the bottom of the fence for a single. Single for Borges. Brings up the third baseman, number three. Yeah. We now have one out, and runners on first and second. Brings up senior Lexi Elliott. Lexi came into the program as a freshman after uh, standout player Cardi Murphy left the program as a senior. Uh, played third base, a power hitter. And Lexi came in as a freshman and took that third base position and has played it all four years. Um, Lexi's been a standout player, great mental attitude. Adds a lot to the program in many ways. Patty, three, Elliot. Lexi singles to right field. And worse, Get down. Delaney Chips comes in to score. Uh, we've got Ali, or courtesy runner, 23, and that got in a rundown. She gets out going in head first slide into third. Lexi Elliott does advance Elliott to second. To second on the, after the single. That'll bring up center fielder double zero. Profile. Zebras do play another run though. Score now being 6-5. Actually, uh, Abby's the flex player. She was in to run for Allie Borges. And ball high, first pitch on Charlie Pocock. Sophomore, double zero, playing center field tonight. And we have strike now for a one and one count. And a cutoff throw out to short, trying to pick off runner Lexi Elliott off a second. And a foul ball out of play, strike two. We have a one-two count, two outs, runner at second, scores six to five. Charlie Pocock hits ball in the air to left fielder Pocock for the catch for out number three. We're heading into the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry, top of the sixth. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, farm personal property, and farm outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions. Online at evansagencyrochester.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank, online at firstfederalbanking.com. Please support the local businesses that help. This broadcast is... Okay, we're at the top of the sixth inning now. Zebras are still in the same defensive positions as last inning. Up to bat, top of the lineup, West. Speedy lefty. Yeah. 
Kennedy does a good job using her equipment to knock that ball down. First pitch ball. And she flies out to Charlie Pocock. Charlie put herself in great position, had to move maybe a couple steps as a hard hit ball. Out number one. We got sights up to bat now. Ball high for your pitch one. Another ball. Get a 2 0 count, one out. Manchester's up six to five. Ball outside for a 3 0 count. And that's ball four to put batter on base for a walk. Thanks, walk. Bring up the center fielder, three K. Yeah, we've got a runner on first now, one out. We've got a ball low. Kenny does a good job keeping that in front of her to keep the runner on first. And then we've got a strike. Kennedy fires it down to first to try to pick off. Runner diving back to be safe. And then she hits foul ball, ground ball, left of third baseline for strike number two. Got a one-two count, one out. Foul ball, batter's fighting that off to buy herself another pitch. Put that good rise ball out of Addy. And a swing and a miss nice change up. By Harsh. That's a well executed change up. For out number two. Got a runner remaining at first. Two outs. This year's seniors had the opportunity to have two years of playing time with two of those Division I softball players, Alexa Holland and Becky Malko. Um, they had successful seasons. Um, great, a great chance to play with high quality players like that. A nice, another nice change up for a swing and miss. Second baseman Corey Rao, senior. Number seven uh, is also a multi-sport athlete. She's a spitfire in volleyball, um, playing the libero position and successful in that sport as well. Very athletic. Lexi Elliott, third baseman number three, our others, another senior. She was also a multi-sport athlete running cross country. Um, she did injure her knee, I believe it was her freshman year. Yeah. Um, there's a picture that we have that uh, it shows it out of place, looking very painful. Um, so for her to come back from that injury, it's 
and play play like she does. It's great. Batter pops up to first baseman Allie Borges for out number three. So we're heading into the bottom of the sixth. Manchester up six to five. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Blue Dragon Taekwondo. In self-defense, physical cross-training, or looking to compete in national tournaments, Blue Dragon Taekwondo is the area's leading martial arts authority. Online at tkdbluedragon.com. RTC Fiber Communications. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice, data, and video connectivity for the 21st century. Local service, local support, local investment. Online at rtc1.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. Here we are back at the bottom of the sixth. First batter up to the plate is number nine, junior Carly Beeler. Beeler, the batter. And ball low. And pitcher's asking to change up the ball. Carly did a really good job in the Northfield game of laying down a sacrifice bunt uh, that helped rally the scoring as well. And we've got a strike now for a 1-1 count. Carly battled injuries early on in her freshman and sophomore year. Uh, she was a multi-sport athlete as well, um, but after battling through those injuries, she's now uh, with softball. Um, and doing well with it. And we've got a foul ball for strike two. Out of play. And Carly flies out to right field. I thought that might drop for a gapper. The solid hit. Nothing wrong with putting the ball in play. And the right fielder is actually cheating towards center a little yeah. bit, playing really far off the line. Yeah, she has given quite a bit of line. So if the Zebras can figure out a way to get one down the line, it might be a good spot for them. Freshman Maya Musselman up to bat now, number 32, lefty. And she is, she popped up to, to the shortstop west for the out, out number two. Got leadoff. Leadoff hitter Macy Brown up to bat, number 11. Um, which she was actually happy to get to wear as that was prior Rochester standout player, Becky Malkos. Uh, she told her she hoped to make her proud wearing that number. Brown now looking to spark a two out rally here for the Zebras. Yeah, first pitch strike. And Brown not liking those, but they're called strikes. And she is, once again, in a protect mode. And she fouls that one off. Still 0-2 count, two outs. Ball outside. And a one two count. Yeah. 
Go ball. Go. And it hits the bottom of the fence. Macy is rounding. Going three. She's down. And safe. Yes. Safe with the head first slide. Hold the Pete Rose. I think she was rounding second when it hit the bottom of the fence. <laughs> and that's the lightning. Here comes part two of the lightning. Corey Rao. That's good. Number seven. Let's have a double strike of lightning. All right, Corey takes strike number one. Brown on third, looking to score. Two outs. And we've got a uh, pop-up in foul territory that the third baseman does a good job going over to the fence to catch. The third base is in the inning at the end of six complete still Manchester six, Zebras five. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Blue Dragon Taekwondo. Whether you want to learn self-defense, physical cross-training, or looking to compete in national tournaments, Blue Dragon Taekwondo is the area's leading martial arts authority. Online at tkdbluedragon.com. RTC Fiber Communications. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice, data, and video connectivity for the 21st century. Local service, local support, local investment. Online at rtc1.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. Okay, folks, here we go. Heading into the last inning. Seven. We're at the top of seven right now. Manchester up to bat. They're leading by one run, six to five. The Seabros really got to focus on not allowing any more runs this inning so they can do some big things in the seventh. Harsh with the first pitch ball. Mm, ball high. We got a 2 0 count. Addie is a single sport athlete playing softball, but she is heavily involved in 4 H um, family shows and does a wonderful job in the 4 H area, which is an important part of our agriculture community. And we've got a strike. For a 3-1 count. Good location by Harsh. And a ball high. Batter walks. Batter walks. We got no outs. Runner at first. Now up to bat. The catcher, number six, Day. Attempts to lay a bunt down. Catcher Kennedy Musselman does a great job scooping that up while it's still fair or er, foul. Good sportsmanship too, picking up the, the bat to hand to the batter. We got a no one count now. Runner at first, no outs. Scores six to five. Pop up and ball. batter. Batter does a bunt that pops up and falls to get her safely to first. Now we have runners at first and second. We 
got Rochester calling a quick team timeout. Huddle to go talk amongst the, each other. Coming back ready to play. Got a force out at third. Ball low for first pitch. Got a 1 0 count. And the ball hits Addie on her leg as she's coming through her windup to make it roll into home. Ball two. That happens. And batter calls time. Feels like taking too long to get the pitch delivered. Here we go with Addy with the windup. And ball high. We've got a 3 0 count now. And ball four to walk the batter. Now we got bases loaded. No, I'll pitcher just, number 12 up the bat. And Coach Holland is calling a timeout. And she's putting Brown in to pitch. Uh, um, Brown hasn't, he, she is a backup pitcher. Uh, normally our short. Brown coming into this game with a 5.15 ERA and a record of 1 and 2. Um, she's had 12 appearances with one save. In 35.1 innings pitch, she has allowed 50 hits, 36 runs, um, walked 14 batters, and had 17 strikeouts. She's faced 182 batters. She's also thrown 557 pitches so far this season. And Zebras are just looking at her to throw strikes right now and, hope, and let the defense do some work. And Brown winds up for a fish pitch strike. Kenny tries to frame that to sell it, but outside and a little high. We got a one two count here. Oh, gets her on the swing. Swinging strike for strike three. That's an out. First base is occupied. Drop third strike doesn't apply. One out now for the Zebras. And a ball one. Double play. 
hard ground ball to third baseman Lexi Elliott who fires it home to get the force out at home and Kennedy Musselman has a great head on her shoulders and knows to fire it to first to get the runner that's a little slow going to first for the double play, yes. At, we're heading into the bottom of the seventh score, 6-5 Manchester. We'll see what the Zebras can do if they can pull out the win. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. The lawyers and staff at Peterson Wagoner and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. RTC Fiber Communications. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice, data, and video connectivity for the 21st century. Local service, local support, local investment. Online at rtc1.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production. Can't go wrong with a little ACDC. And here we are heading into the bottom of seven. Score 6-5, Kennedy Musselman, senior Kennedy Musselman up to bat. She already hit one dinger tonight and another hit that hit the bottom of the fence. Although at some other fields that would have been a home run. Yeah, like at Winnemac High School in the park field, they have a very short fence of about 180 in center and probably 170 on the corners. Kennedy, oh, oh, rips a line drive that the shortstop Wes makes a snow cone catch. I think that was defense mode of self, self defense. Great hit by Musselman, but phenomenal catch by Wes. Absolutely. And we've got Addie Harsh up to bat. And pitcher hits her leg as well, rolls it into first, or to home for a ball. Ball high, 2-0 count. Uh, <laughs> Addy grounds to shortstop, he throws to first for the out. Out number two. So here we are, see if we can get a two out rally going. Sophomore number 12, Allie Borges is up to bat. Ali also plays some travel ball. She plays on the Indiana Shockwaves. Excellent program. Nice Ali rips a nice single into right field. Right over the second baseman's head. Now to bat number three, Alexis Elliott. Let's see what she can do. And we'll be having courtesy runner Delaney Chips coming in. Number four to run for Borges. Substitution for the Zebras, number four, Chips, 412, Lexi Elliott, our senior tonight, number three. A strike for first pitch, hitting the outside corner. On the low end. And a change up that falls short. We've got base runner. They're going Delaney Chips, steal second. Steal second. Uh, shortstop West did a good job jumping up to get the throw that might have been an overthrow. Comes down, tries to sweep tag, and uh, just misses her. So the tying run is on second. The winning Lexi. run is up to bat. Lexi Elliott. Ball high, 2-1 count now. Lexi has always shown confidence in the up to bat, being patient. Ooh, she about wore that one. Another ball. 
We've got a 3-1 count. Two outs. Lexi rips a single. Here we go, here we go. Delaney Chips coming in. She's blocking. That's obstruction. Gotta move out of the way. She didn't have the ball yet. That's obstruction. Well, but call stands. We're not gonna question it. Um, so zebras lose six five, but conference champs with a, an eight one record in the conference. Manchester now moving to 14 and 8 overall, and the Zebras sliding to 13 and 9. Zebras' next game is tomorrow night, South Bend Clay, uh, at South Bend Clay, and then playing the doubleheader, or three way actually, at uh, Culver Academy on Saturday with Northwestern and Culver Academy, um, and then heading into sectional play. So we wish the Zebras good luck. Um, as they head into the tail end of their season and into sectional play. This was brought to you by RTC Communications, RTC TV Channel 4, your local area TV provider. Excellent, I must say. Uh, they can bring you internet, cable, phone, you name it, and at high speed. They are an awesome local, local provider as well as a pillar in the community. We are thankful for them in the community and thankful for them broadcasting games such as this. And we are out. This broadcast is brought to you in part by these local sponsors. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, farm personal property, and farm outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions online at evansagencyrochester.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank, online at firstfederalbanking.com. Please support the local businesses that help us bring you this production.